Hello, I'm Jonah with Magnanimous Media, and today we're going to be talking about the Steadicam Pilot. The Steadicam Pilot is a lighter Steadicam that's designed for cameras in the 10 pound range. Another thing that makes this system unique are the weights. The weights allow you to adjust your camera position on the sled in a way that you weren't able to do with other, other Steadicams. It's comprised of three major parts. The first is the sled, which includes your battery and monitor. Second are the arms, and the third is the vest. The other parts included are the docking bracket with the balancing stud, an RCA cable that'll attach your camera to the monitor, BNC adapter for that. There's also a register pin for your camera and the one quarter inch bolt to attach your camera. And again, the weights. The first thing I wanna point out with this system is that it's not something that you should expect to pick up and use smoothly immediately. It's something that requires quite a bit of practice. We suggest that you either hire a Steadicam operator for your shoot or you rent this out before your shoot and test it out and get good with it before you go on and, and start to use it. The Steadicam is something that even while using it with a professional, you want to walk through all of your choreography before you start the shoot uh, because again, it requires quite a bit of practice to get good with. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is camera selection. We are going to be using this today with the FS100. We're choosing the FS100 because the standard lens that comes with it allows you to autofocus, which is very important on the Steadicam. Another option is to use a wide angle lens, which gives you deep depth of field, or you can use a wireless lens control system, which will allow an AC to pull focus for you, because again, you don't want to touch the camera at all. You're not going to be able to use a manual follow focus on it. So the first thing we're going to want to do in setting up the Steadicam is find the center of gravity of our camera. We do that by just using a sturdy object with a fairly narrow surface and balance it side to side and forward to backward to find your center gravity on the camera. And we want to place that three quarters of an inch behind the center of the cheese block, which is going to roughly place it three quarters of an inch behind the center axle on the sled. Once you have your camera center of gravity found and placed on your cheese block, you're going to put your docking bracket onto your C-stand. Tighten that down. Once your docking bracket's on, you're gonna place your sled onto the balancing stud on the docking bracket. Once your sled is on the docking bracket, you can place the camera and all other accessories onto the sled. Once we've got our camera and all of our accessories onto the sled, we're going to want to adjust the sled for the way we want to shoot. We're going to design this for a slightly higher camera, so what we're going to do is extend the monitor and battery bracket out on the sled. Fully extend that. And then we're going to want to find the center of gravity for the sled. You do this by adjusting the gimbal over the center axle, and you want to get it to where it's just balancing the sled horizontally. So once we've roughly found our center of gravity, we're going to place the gimbal just above that center of gravity and tighten it down. And that makes the sled slightly bottom heavy. And what that does is allow the camera to stay in the upright position. Further, what we're going to do is adjust the gimbal to find our drop time. The drop time is measured in the amount of time it takes the sled to go from horizontal to passing vertical. Steadicam suggests a drop time of about two seconds. Now, there are reasons for having a shorter drop time or a more bottom heavy sled. And generally, if you're shooting in high winds or shooting a very tight shot zoomed in, you're gonna want the camera to be slightly more stable, which is why you'll want a more bottom heavy sled. The downside of having a short drop time is that your sled will tend to pendulum when you start to accelerate. Whereas if you have a slower drop time, around two seconds again is what Steadicam suggests, you're less likely to pendulum. 
Once you've found the appropriate drop time, you want to then adjust your static balance. Static balance is when the camera and the center axle is at a resting position, and it's straight vertical from the side and also from the front. You adjust your static balance by first adjusting the battery and monitor position, and then fine tuning the camera position on the top. Once you've found your static balance, you want to then find your dynamic equilibrium. You do this by spinning the camera. The dynamic equilibrium is a fairly complicated thing to explain. Uh, we suggest that you go on to Steadicam's website and download their dynamic primer and get a better understanding for yourself. But the basic procedure for adjusting your dynamic equilibrium is to give it a spin. If it wobbles, then you want to adjust your battery position and then your camera position to compensate. Give it another spin. If it's better, then repeat the same process to fine tune it. If it's worse, then reverse your process. Dynamic equilibrium is another one of those things that it's a reason why we suggest that you rent this out before you're actually going to use it and practice with it to try to fine tune that or you want to work with a professional. So once you've found your dynamic equilibrium, you have what's called dynamic balance and you're ready to put the vest on. The arm comes in two pieces. You'll connect that by placing them so they're going in an upward position and then placing the center pin to connect them. Once the arm is connected, you're ready to put the vest on. You put the vest on by first attaching the back padding and then attaching your breastplate. This all attaches by Velcro. So once you have that tight, you'll take the strap and run it around your back across just below your sternum. Get that nice and tight. And then you'll want to adjust your hip pad placement. You do that with the four screws located just under your sternum. And then you'll wrap the Velcro strap around that and get it nice and tight on your hip pad. Once you've done that, you can attach the arm and you do that by placing the center pin on the plate that adjusts your hip pad placement. Just slide it right in and then tighten it. Once you have your arm attached, you're ready to attach the sled to your arm. And this camera is fairly high and this is where the weights come in. You can add weight to either side to adjust the position of your gimbal uh, and maintain the same drop time. So you can go higher in high mode and lower in low mode. Again, the Steadicam is fairly complicated to operate. It takes a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get good with it, so we suggest that you either hire a Steadicam operator for your shoot or rent the Steadicam out and practice with it before your shoot. For rates, go to www.magnanimous.biz. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at, at magnanimousshy.